Nisha, thanks for being with us today. You have a buy reading on Nike. Uh, it, it sure seems to me if there was one takeaway, one headline takeaway from these results, it's pricing power. How do you see it? Yeah, absolutely. Pricing power. But I would add the second one is brand strength. Mm. Um, you know, Nike's brand strength has increased as a result of, you know, all the disruption we've, we've experienced over the last two years. It has more customers, faster customer growth, more DTC sales, stronger app traction. So it really is commercially much stronger in terms of the brand. And that drives pricing power. So it's a virtuous circle. Yeah. I mean, in terms of those cost pressures, are we at a place where we can say that that those have peaked or that we're seeing the peak in those for, for a company such as Nike? I mean, elevated transportation costs, all the issues uh, around COVID closures, for example, uh, in Vietnam and parts of Asia, which now seem to be coming back online. Is the worst over? I believe so. But, you know, as you know, with COVID, it's, it's hard to tell. I think, you know, the, the, the problem for Nike is the concentration of the supply base. 50% of the shoe volume comes from Vietnam, 30% of the apparel volume. So they're quite exposed to that country in particular. Um, but in terms of COVID, it does seem like the worst is over. In terms of freight costs, you know, they've talked about having elevated transit times this quarter and as a result are putting more money into air freight and more um, express freight which again is more costly. So overall, I think you're right. I think it, it uh, moderates over the course of the year, but there'll be blips here and there um, as we experience this quarter. Let's talk about the growth in direct to consumer, because obviously that's been something that's playing out for a number of quarters. We've seen it impact shares of Foot Locker in the past, although those positive comments on the call regarding Foot Locker last night, how much more profitable is D2C versus the more traditional model that Nike had always implemented? Yeah, there's a lot of discussion on this fact, and we've broken down the P&Ls to try to analyze this and understand the different cost buckets. On a gross margin level, it's considerably more profitable, 20 plus percentage points, because when you're in wholesale, your revenue is only about 60% of the GMV of the product, because you give the reseller or the, or the retailer um, a pretty big uh, chunk of that total GMV. When you're DTC, you get the full growth, full revenue. So you, there's a nice revenue gross up, which results in much higher gross margins. But you have much higher OPEX. So you're running your channel costs and your shipping and your marketing and so on. So net net, it's quite close. Um, it is slightly margin accretive for Nike, but that is because of Nike's scale and and the economies of scale it gets on the channel costs. For many other brands, it's margin dilutive. Yeah, that explains a lot about the chart we're looking at right there, uh, a one year of Nike and Foot Locker. Anisha, I wonder how you're thinking about uh, Vietnam. Um, we've done some coverage from there, and it's a huge, obviously, supply chain focus for the company. I mean, how are you generally viewing supply chain risk, I guess COVID risk, uh, when you're looking at, 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 at Asia? Yeah, supply chain risk is tricky for footwear manufacturers because they structurally have to be concentrated in their supply chains because there's so much expertise and capex involved in creating high performance footwear um, that it's it's hard to have the kind of diversified supply chains that apparel does. So that is structurally part of the business model. What the big footwear giants, including Nike, are trying to do is try to find agility and nimbleness elsewhere. So tagging their products with RFID so they have more line of sight into the entire higher chain um, from start to finish, um, doing more fast production runs, paying more for air freight to ship things faster, and trying to make up for it elsewhere and get more agile, as well as using their data and their DTC to do better demand planning. So they have you know, better predictability and good models to understand what's going to be hot and what's selling.